Welcome to The Herbal Ire, your podcast on all things holistic health, medical astrology, spirituality, herbalism, and so much more. Presented by your host, Ayer Atla, medical astrologist, herbalist, and naturopath. Let's dive right into today's topic, love and light. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Herbal Ire. Today, I am talking to Ashley Goody Twitty. She was actually here, I believe it was episode two of the first season, and she has written a book since then, and it's awesome. I've read it myself and absolutely enjoyed it. I recommend it to many, if not all, of my clients um, because of just how amazing it really is and how transformative it actually is when you follow the steps. And so today I um, invited her in here to have a conversation with me about that book. Um, we did this live on Facebook maybe a couple of weeks ago, and now it's going live here on the podcast for you. So I hope you enjoy this. It was an awesome conversation with an equally awesome person. If you are interested in purchasing the book, when you get done, it's only $2.99 on Kindle, so there's really no excuse not to. The link will be in the show notes for you. I hope you enjoy. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ashley and I are here today to talk about her book. Um, Ashley was on the podcast previously, um, if you listen to that, and we kind of just discussed her business as a wellness witch and helping women with their health um, issues, mainly like anxiety and other things like that and getting healthy. Um, and she herself went through a process of going from being pretty unhealthy mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and transformed her life. And she wrote a book about it and all the tips and tricks that you need to do the same thing. And it's amazing. I've read it myself. So highly recommend you check that out. So today we're going to be talking with Ashley Goody Twitty about her book, From Unhealthy Bitch to Wellness Witch. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, thank you. So excited to be here. Yes, I'm excited that you're here too. Let me just say, y'all, I read this book from cover to cover in probably about two hours um it was that good like just could not put it down and then went back through and did like all of the journaling prompts because it just um it was just too good to put down and do them at that moment in time (laughs) so um, if you're looking for a book that will help you figure out how to go from where you are now especially feeling stuck to getting to the point that you want to get to, then this is definitely um, the book for you. So in it, Ashley goes over like five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten sizzling secrets. So I'd like to touch on those just really briefly about what those ten secrets are, Ashley. So, um, but first let's kind of get into your story. What made you, you know, go from where you were to where you were, where you are now, and then write a book about it? Um, that is a good question. And every time I get it, I'm always like, uh, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but no, it started, honestly, my, my whole transition to where I wanted to be. It's really started as I wanted to lose weight. So it started with a weight loss, like very mm-hmm. basic surface level desire. Um, but then when I got in there and started researching and discovering, um, I became more enlightened about what's really happening. So that set my whole soul on fire. Like people need to understand like what they're telling us is food is not really food. And this medicine isn't really helping and all these different things. Um, But Mm -hmm. the longer I worked at it and committed myself to it, the more I realized it was really more along the lines of it's all about the mindset piece behind it. Right. And it's like, understanding why are you doing the things that you're doing what's your motivation behind your life because so many Mm -hmm. of us are just living the life that we're programmed to live someone else programmed us but we came with our own stuff in mind and then we're gonna get shoved to the side so my journey from unhealthy bitch to wellness which really started with the weight loss part but it, it blossomed into something so much more beautiful than just the basic well, for better, lack of better terms, the basic bitch level of, I just need to be skinny, right? Because it's not about being skinny. Being healthy is not always mm-hmm. about being skinny. Although that's what we've been sold, which is another conditioning yes. aspect. That's right? the diet industry for you there too. Yeah. Conditioning you that skinny is healthy and that's not always the case. 
No, no. But um, there was something that just ignited inside me, and I just I wanted people to know that they would be much happier if they would just take the time to look at what they're doing and why they're doing it, right? So the book yes. itself came because I, I was actually going through files where I had worked in recovery for a while um, with substance use, and I had this, it was a short little one pager, and it was tips for changing, essentially changing your life. How do you, what do you want to be? And I was like, oh, that's a really good one. I'm going to go back and revamp that and kind of flesh it out to make, to make it as a, um, like a how-to manual for people that want to do it on their own, for women that want to start this journey to keep moving forward and finding themselves. Cause life isn't, life is okay, but life is wonderful when you're being yourself more often than not, you're still going to have a bad day. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> it's so much more enjoyable. Yes. It is. It is. I can attest to that too. When we, you know, stopped living how we really wanted to live and kind of let other people's opinions like sneak in there. And so we kind of made some changes that weren't really what we wanted to do. Like it was terrible. And like all of a sudden, like life was miserable. And I was like, life has never been this miserable. What in the world? But as soon as we made that just one little change and went back to just really being who we were and said, fuck what anybody else thinks, it's uh, so much better. So, yeah, highly and this agree book with really that. is that's really what the book is. It's really learning mm -hmm. how to say, fuck what anybody else thinks, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, what do I want? And it's okay for me to want what I want. And how do I manage the other pieces? How do I fi figure out what I want? And how do I make that work for me? And part of it is, yeah, what everybody else says, people are going to talk about you no matter what you do. If you're doing good, they're going to talk about you. If you're doing terrible, they're going to talk about you. And we have this big fear that no one can ever say anything bad about mm -hmm. us. I mean, maybe not all of us, but I have, I did before mm -hmm. and it held me back tremendously. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's just, I really want people to understand women in particular, but people in general, just to understand you get to make the choice. You get to choose what you're dealing with in life. And probably maybe nobody ever told you that. Um, yeah. Particularly, and I know we've talked about this before, uh, particularly if you're raised in a religious background, mm -hmm. you're, you're told what is your role. You're told that. Yeah. And I think that if that aligns with you and that's where you want to be, that's fine. But that wasn't, mm -hmm. that wasn't for me. And there's a, chapter in the book that talks about that going through that and having to lose your religion <laughs> to find who you really are um yeah. which is no easy feat it's a scary road to travel right mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah but very limited. you know I've been there too and it was mm -hmm. terrifying not because like I didn't want to go that way or like I was being forced to leave my religion but that was literally all I had known my whole life since I was like a newborn and so when I just knew that wasn't for me anymore and it wasn't serving me and I knew I needed to go away. I thought, oh, this will be easy. And it wasn't. It was so hard because I was giving up community and family and everything I had ever known and been taught. And it really took me a while to figure out like who I was without that, you know, like structure of that you know, religion telling me what I should believe and what I should wear and who I should date and what I should do and who my friends could be. And it was scary to like not have that, I guess you want to consider like a safety net to fall back on. And um, yeah, it took some time. <laughs> so I, I, I get that. I've been there and it's, uh, it's not easy. You're right. But sometimes for some of us, it is part of our evolution. We can never be who we came to be until mm -hmm. we shed what we were told we were supposed to be right yeah and that yeah, is that's super, for sure and the way it's sold to you is scary that whole thing is just <laughs> that's why they yeah. do it that way I think but <laughs> like, yes fear is a powerful motivator for many 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 things and unfortunately many many religions operate very fear-based in how they get their members to follow their rules and stuff and that's just not something I want for my life or my family's life anymore, you know? Yeah. And that's where I'm at. I mean, I have two little ones and uh, I, I encourage them to follow their heart. If that's their path, then they get to choose that. 
when they are of that age or if they mm-hmm. want to go now if they're like hey mom can I go to church with grandma sure but I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna go and walk through the motions every day because it doesn't align with me but that's still their freedom to explore and decide if that's what they want yeah anyway not yeah. that you yeah. were saying we do. Them, but <laughs> no but I get it we do the same with our kids too they've been to the church a handful of times because they wanted to go and every time they come back and they're like oh no I just don't really like that but then they try again and maybe a different denomination and they always come back the same way uh, not no not that one either and I think that's just usually like I said, it's just part of growing and learning and finding what works for you and so are none of the ones they've tried to have and that's fine and they'll find their path when they're ready to you know yeah and I think it's it's really important that they feel that they I think it's empowering to know that yeah. you get to make the choice and that it's not like, yes. oh, this is you were born and this is your religion, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, for so. sure. Because that's yeah, definitely something I didn't have. And so then when I did try to change it, just it was all that, like guilt and like build up of like what my family say or they even speak to me anymore and all this stuff because of the way I was raised in it and I just don't want that for my kids I want them to feel like empowered and happy with whatever choice they go for whether they it's anything or nothing you know I don't care but yeah yeah all good points and the judgment that comes with it sometimes like yeah that should be love but it's actually just judgment that's what really gets me yeah so, that's a that's piece too <laughs> yes love and I love, love that is my religion I really try yep. hard to love everybody and love love that they have a different viewpoint and it, it doesn't have mm-hmm. to align with mine, right? Yeah. That's part of the beauty of it. And that's so nice mm-hmm. and free when you can step back from that confine and see. Yeah. yeah. So that's what they yeah. think. And I don't have to agree. And they can stay over there and I can stay over here. And what a lovely world. Exactly. Yes. I think that's when you can tell for sure that you've really like grown more than maybe you even realize is when other people's opinions, beliefs, lives, whatever, just don't trigger you anymore and they don't offend you and you're able to just look at it and go, yeah, okay, I don't agree with that and I'd probably never do it, but yeah, that's their life. Okay. And, you know, and off you go. You know, I think that's a huge point right there where you can be like, oh, hey, I have grown a lot as a human being. Yeah. And you get so much more of your energy because we don't realize how much energy we lose to unnecessary yeah. shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just totally understand that. It's also a part of the book too, like learning um, how to manage your energy or how to set boundaries, because that's a big thing mm-hmm. is having the boundary in place so that you're not losing the energy. And you you know kind of how to navigate when you're making the changes because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable to say, okay, this this role that I've been playing is not who I actually think I am, but I also don't know who I am and what do I want, right? Yeah. So when you start shifting, people in your life are like, what's going on? What's happening? Mm-hmm. <laughs> am I okay yeah. here? What's happening? Yeah. And some unfortunately never shift with you and you lose people along the way, which I think is why it, a lot of people stay stuck where they are. They feel like they want to change. They know they want to change. But that fear of losing the people in their lives that have been there for a really long time makes it really hard to move forward because you just can't imagine or see a life without those people that have always been there. And it's hard to know that everybody is in your life for a season and that season may be coming to an end, even if this person is like an actual family member, you know, not every family member is supposed to be in your life forever. And that's a hard thing to accept, Um, especially if you've been raised. I don't know how you were, but I was raised that like family, 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 family is so important. It's more than anything. It doesn't matter if you know, Aunt Linda's been a bitch to you for the last 17 years. She's family. That's just who she is. You put up with it. You don't set a boundary. You know, (laughs) you just deal with it because, well, that's just who Aunt Linda is. And, you know, they just teach you to, you know, just put up with everybody else's behaviors. And then if you set a boundary that, oh my God, something's wrong with you because they're family. 
And then if you do set boundaries and you start, you know, taking care of yourself better, then you get called selfish because all you ever think about is yourself. <laughs> and it makes it hard for a lot of people to want to to follow through on the changing, even if they start. So that's what I appreciate about your book, because you really do go into why it's okay to be selfish, selfish in quotes, y'all, because it's not really selfish to put yourself first and take care of you. And then how setting boundaries is a really important piece of this journey. Yes, absolutely. It, it literally, the, the jumping off point in the book is how to be selfish or become selfish or something like that. But like she said, it is, yeah. it's learning how to put yourself first because you can never fully thrive if you're always given everything to someone else. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean that in putting yourself first that, I mean, you then get to be more to the people that you're choosing that align with you, that respect you, that give you reciprocal energy, not that control piece, like you were talking about Aunt Linda, (laughs) not the controlling piece, like, oh, she's family, so you just have to put up with it. No, that's not respectful, and that's not reciprocal, and you teach people how to treat you, and if you always allow that and permit that, that doesn't just allow for her to do that, but for multiple other people to treat you that way, and for you to feel like you have to put up with it, right, and I just... That's the that's yeah. the first part is learning how to be selfish because of how that sets the tone of the vibration, right? Like, and that's what you're attracting more of. And it's so vital um, yeah. for us to learn how to do that. Yeah, because like you said, when you, you said something about the change in the energy, when you change to becoming more like in this case, selfish as people believe and taking care of you and putting out that energy of, hey, I'm important and I'm a valuable person and I won't allow you to treat me like this. You attract back people in your life who won't treat you like that, who do value you as a person, who do find you like this super interesting person they want to spend time with because you've changed your energy and what you're attracting. And that's a big piece of this too is not only changing like how you believe about yourself, but changing that vibration you're putting out. So you start attracting people who feel the same way about you and start replacing those people in your life that don't feel that way slowly, but surely. Yeah. And that's a part of um, them keeping you. I don't know. I think I said that just a second ago, but controlled, right? Like, yeah, I can't stand that piece, that control piece, like that constant you're stuck in that control. You can tell freedom mm-hmm. always. It always comes back to freedom, but mostly freedom yeah. of expression because we're not all here to be the same. Um, no. And we have so many, so many people are depressed and, and not just depression. We think a lot about depression when we think about things like this, but like physically ill, like physical ailments, diseases like that are manifesting mm-hmm. because you're not energetically living the life that you want to be living but you've been conditioned to stay and keep doing because that makes you a good person. And Mm -hmm. that is bullshit. That is total and utter bullshit. Like that's not the truth. It's 100%. And it's, that's really why I focused hard on the mindset aspect and like looking at things, because I think if you can start to crack that, that piece Mm -hmm. open, the rest of it will come together, you know, yeah. but you got to work through that yucky, funky stuff to yeah. get there. You do. And that's what I appreciate about your book is like every like sizzling secret builds on the one previous. So like you said, you start with let's commit to being selfish, right? Like let's commit to putting ourselves first, taking care of ourselves first, valuing ourselves so that other people value us so we don't get treated like we were anymore so that we start you know, really when we value your body and you love your body and you love who you are, you start treating it better automatically because you don't treat somebody you love like shit. At least I would hope not. That's not love then, you know? So when you really start loving yourself, you start treating yourself better. You start treating your body better. You start treating others around you better. And then that attracts, you know, better people in your life. And then sizzling secret number two builds on that where it's like, decide it and own it. You're going to decide you're doing this. I'm owning this journey. Let's go, you know, but I like that the first one is really, Hey, let's learn to love ourselves better because you'll never make any changes in your life. If you hate yourself, you don't get a body you love by hating your body. You get a body you love by loving your body, right? Even if you don't 
love everything about it, but you, you are okay with being where you are right now and loving where you are, you will start making changes that will give you the body that you ultimately are looking for. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's imperative. And when you really start to realize that if you always feel bad, like you were saying, if you always hate yourself, you always feel bad about yourself. That is your set vibrational point. You can Mm -hmm. only get what's on that frequency. So everything will always suck. So it really is like taking that time and figuring out, like make a list of things that you can appreciate about yourself. Anything. Can you move your arms? Mm -hmm. Cause that's a big deal. Some people cannot, like it can be so very simple, which is typically what we're overlooking. Anyway, is the simplicity of, of how health is simple (laughs) and we overcomplicate it way too much. (laughs) <laughs> health is the most <laughs> simple thing I say that all the time and I yes. for me even coming back to it was it that's the part is getting the convoluted especially like the mainstream weight loss diet mm-hmm. bull crap off of it and and realizing like health is simple like we know what to do you eat vegetables and you drink water and you move your body and like you don't eat too many Twinkies. It's not really rocket science per se. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, anyway. Yeah, um, it is simple. It's not always easy, but it's definitely simple. And, you right. know, again, though, I think when you work on sizzling secret number one and you start being more selfish and treating yourself better and realizing that you're important too, and you're not always sacrificing your wants and desires and needs for everybody else's around you that that automatically starts being something you do right you automatically start drinking more water because you're like hey this makes my body feel better and I like this or hey I'm gonna eat all these vegetables over here because I like the flavor and I don't care if everyone else in my family is eating you know insert whatever over there you know like you start not worrying anymore right you stop worrying I guess about what other people are thinking about what you're doing or why you're eating this or why you're out running you know seven times a day because you like it and you start just putting all of that energy and effort of worrying about other people into like you and you automatically start making better choices for your body because you don't care anymore what anybody else is fucking saying about it yeah and even though I don't still adhere to the religion but it's that one part of that there's there's truth in every religion by the way but um it's about putting the idols first right when you put something Mm -hmm. before your your connection with yourself like they've kind of convoluted that statement in my opinion when you put something between your connection with yourself your energy your Mm -hmm. higher self your connection whether it doesn't matter and that's why selfish has to be because you have to be connected to you first or you're you're never going to do it as well for anything else yeah Yeah. Um, you're always going to feel like you're behind the eight ball yeah so let's see what else is in here what's secret so we were kind of talked about one two and three we touched on nine a little bit about setting boundaries um yeah so yeah four Um, is getting to the root of the issue and yeah, getting to the root, uh, addressing what I like to call emotional MRSA. <laughs> like the suppressed, yes. I love the that suppressed phrase. garbage. <laughs> like the things that we're carrying around that we don't mm-hmm. realize we're carrying around um, just because of how the nervous system works. I mean, basically, we're just like this big database. And the job, the function of the computer is to keep you alive so you can have another experience tomorrow, right? So yes, you've stored all this stuff and now it's like, you've got all these heavy emotional draining memories that are just stored and your body feels them. Like if you encounter, if you come close to like, you had a kid that picked on you in the fifth grade, right? That was fifth grade. Like I'm 38 years old, but still, if I come in a room and there's those similar people in my crowd, my body starts to feel a sensation right? And it's from that experience where I got picked on in fifth grade. My body starts to feel that. I can feel it. My pulse gets higher. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, st- I change my um, physiologically. I'm different. I'm in a different mode. So, and that comes from the trauma that was experienced with that one little segment that lasted maybe three minutes. 
and wasn't quite that severe if you're looking at it from like certain traumas, right? Like it, it wasn't as severe as some people's trauma, but still to my system, doesn't matter. It registered as trauma, it's traumatic. I'm not safe around these people and my system knows that, right? So it goes on overdrive if I, if I run into somebody like that. Now, now I'm aware so I can buffer and like settle down and be like, okay, consciously work it out. But if you don't, you've got like so many, like your whole lifetime full of stored traumas that are setting you off and triggering you all day long. So if you never take the time to stop and like work through and pull out the emotional issues, like you're going to have that carry with you. And that makes it much harder for you to enjoy life, for you to enjoy anything because you're always on edge because your database is stored, all the files, there's no room for anything new to be stored. Like Mm -hmm. it's just filled up and overflowing with traumatic experiences that are there. I mean, it has a purpose, but we just live in a time where we need to slow down and like sort it out because can't enjoy anything without it. Yeah. An overwhelmed, overworked, overburdened nervous system does not make for a very happy or healthy life because, again, you're too overwhelmed to be able to make maybe a better choice for your body or a better choice for your life because just at that point, you're like, it's almost like decision-making fatigue. You're just so overwhelmed that even just choosing what to eat is like way too hard for your body to do and regulate because it's just so overloaded, overworked and overwhelmed. And so there was a point I think you made in the book about like, get outside, get back to nature, get away from like, take a break from work or whatever it is to like, just get out there and like do whatever it takes to like get that nervous system regulated a little bit better and away from whatever might be triggering that or causing it to just get worse. Like modern day society is not good for nervous systems. It's really not. <laughs> everything is turning on your flight and fight response because driving in traffic especially in a big city there is a whole hell of a lot of fight in uh, <laughs> how you have to drive right <laughs> people are trying to cut you off you're swerving it's it's very stressful on your body to have to drive in something like that all the time because your body doesn't know the difference between a tiger trying car running into you you know and so every day it feels like you're fighting tigers 100 tigers to get to work (laughs) and then you get to work and now you have 100 tigers you got to fight because your bosses are yelling at you have deadlines you have this and then you got to fight those 100 tigers to go back home and maybe 500 tigers in the grocery store just to get your food and by the time you get home your body is done you are done you have fought like according to your body that day about a thousand tigers and you're exhausted, you're overwhelmed, your adrenals are burned out and fatigued, and so are you. And it's really hard to come home then and make a healthy choice. It really is. Let's just be honest there. And honestly, because at that point, all your body is craving is is probably a little bit of dopamine, something to make the brain feel Mm -hmm. a little bit happier. And what's going to give you more dopamine? Not a vegetable right off, but a Twinkie might, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Twinkie's gonna have that fat and cream and salt, and like it's gonna hit all those things mm-hmm. and make that brain light up. Um, yep. So yeah, I mean, we our nervous systems are constantly like that. When you have that suppressed emotion, like it's like having an infection that's underlying and it's making everything sick. And whether it happens every encounter out loud or if it is like a nasty explosion, like you just hold mm-hmm. it all in and then you have a nasty like, Ugh, yeah, like yell fist at somebody or something like. If you don't work it out, you always have an infection. There's a storm brewing underneath. Yeah. Um, and that's part of working through that, figuring out how do you do that. Um, and being mm-hmm. graceful. That's that's the sizzling seven is is how yeah. do you do that with grace? How do you give yourself the space to change without being so hard? And um, I know for yeah. me it was like shame is a big thing for me like feeling shameful Mm -hmm. and you should be ashamed which whoever started saying that should be ashamed (laughs) yes that's a terrible like to to children like yes (laughs) yes it is especially I find that they tend they tend to say that the most to to 
like children that don't conform to what their standards are, what they believe a child should be, which typically tends to be people who already have overworked, overwhelmed nervous systems because they're struggling with like ADHD that they don't know that they have or autism that again, they don't know they have because and they haven't been treated for it because their parents haven't taken them to get diagnosed because, oh, well, you know, Jimmy just needs to be, you know, insert whatever here and then he won't be like that anymore. And they're they're overwhelmed and struggling and they're being shamed for being who they are. And it makes it really hard to ever come back from that. Sometimes like that was my struggle was coming back from that. I was always, you know, as a child shamed for being loud, for being, you know, um, lots of energy sometimes for wanting to talk all the time, for wanting to just like have my opinion known and like people to hear it and talk to me and listen to me. And in my house, it was like, children should be seen and not heard. And so me wanting to be like loud and boisterous and talk was like really shamed because I wasn't being, you know, what a child should be. I wasn't being what a female presenting child should be. Let's rephrase that. In my household, the boys could do that and they were fine. Anybody who, you know, was male presenting was fine, but I wasn't. And so I wasn't okay to do that. And I was shamed for that constantly. And it took me a long time to be okay with like, I'm, I'm a loud person. My voice is naturally loud and that's just how it is. I'm naturally just more boisterous and outgoing than other people in my family. And I like to talk a lot and that's okay. And then if you go and you look, those are literally like all of the symptoms of girls with ADHD. But my parents never noticed that because all they saw was a child who wasn't behaving how she should be. And they were gonna shame me into doing what they thought I should do. And it was gonna miraculously fix me. Well, it didn't because there's nothing wrong with me. I didn't need fixing. I needed understanding. You needed accepting. That's what you Mm -hmm. need. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think in this learning to accept yourself is like a really huge piece of your book, accepting you for everything you are that everyone has always told you is bad because there's nothing wrong with who you are. There isn't everything about you is part of your cosmic blueprint and it makes you amazing. And so letting go of that burden that other people have placed on you because they don't understand you because they don't care to understand you because they don't care to be accepting because they uh, have a pre-described notion of how you should be in their head is a really huge piece in changing your health is learning to not only love your body but love who you are on the inside of that body yes and to what you're saying they don't have that because they don't accept themselves fully yeah Exactly. When you start to do that, you accept other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's the sad, the missing link. And it's not okay. It's a, what, how do they say it? It's a, it's not an excuse. It's an explanation. It doesn't excuse yes. the behavior. <laughs> behavior still shit. No. It sucks. <laughs> but it's mm-hmm. an explanation. They can't accept you because they can't accept them. Because yeah. most likely they were conditioned that way also. So, yeah. Um, for sure. Um, but yeah, and then there was another, there's a section about um, bracing for impact, which kind of mm-hmm. goes through um, talking about shifting religions and getting ready for people to change in your life. Things that we did touch on a little bit, how everything kind of yeah. shifts. There's going to be an impact when you decide to put your um, foot down, so to speak, and, and take control of your power. There's going to be like a yeah. fallout from that. There's a brace for impact. That's what that's about, um, is understanding that there will be significant changes and not all of them that you want to change. But if you're willing to allow the change, good things will come, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then, of course, setting boundaries and getting support. Like Mm -hmm. some of us can work through it on our own, but all of us could use an outside person here and there to pose questions that your brain won't allow you to pose to yourself. It's the way I like to put it. Um, Mm -hmm. It's kind of like after my brother passed away, I saw a therapist and I was having an issue with a family member. And I was like, well, I can't say that to her. She was like, why? And I was like, what do you mean? Why? I just can't, you don't, you don't say that to her, but have you ever, right? Like, have you ever communicated <laughs> that to her? Yeah. No. Then how does she know that that's how you feel when that happens? So I would have never posed that because there was already a roadblock in my mind. Like I would have never posed mm-hmm. that question to myself. Right. So that's an example of how having someone outside of you helps 
to pose the questions and that caught the big breakthrough. Like I had the conversation. It was a difficult conversation. It didn't go over the way I wanted it to initially, but a little while down, it did turn, right? It did make a change. Yeah. It what didn't happen immediately, but it did shift the situation. So getting support is, is hugely important and vital in having your best outcome. And especially I don't want to say to make it more speedy because it's a process. You never like, you're always healing and uncovering and then healing and mending. It's, it's a whole lifetime of it, but, um, what word am I really looking for? I'm not sure, but speedy is the only one coming to mind, but it helps to have that, to unpack it because depending on how Mm -hmm. severe the trauma and how many blocks there are, having someone outside of you to support and hold that space while you're you're dealing with it, but also to pose those questions that will allow you to look mm-hmm. in the places that your own nervous system is going to try to protect you from looking. Yeah, is important. Yeah. Exactly. You sometimes having that third party, and this can be just a friend. It can be someone professional. I mean, Ashley has her own program that she does a lot of this. I have mine that I do a lot of this too. So there's you know professional people you can go to a therapist if that's you know your jam or you know just some friend that you know is the kind of friend that will always be honest with you and isn't going to hold back but will be doing that in a kind way not one of those like bluntly honest people who's really just a a mean you know bully at heart but someone who loves you enough to like call you on your bullshit kind of a friend that's you know what you need you definitely need to start bringing some more people in your life who are on your side, who love you for you, who appreciate every piece about you, even those quirks and pieces of you that you were told were terrible growing up and shamed for having, like those kind of people in your life are so invaluable when you are on this journey. Like I can't even tell you if I didn't have my sister from another mister during some of the hardest points in my life to literally like shake me sometimes and be like what are you doing why are you doing this what's going on to do that I really don't know where I would be right now like she literally has snapped me out of so many like (laughs) poor decisions that I've been going down the path after and you know because she loves me enough to be willing to call me on my bullshit and I love her enough to do the same thing back so if I see her going away that I'm like oh I'm like hey are you 100% positive this is the right idea you know should you be doing this let's discuss this more because I love her and I don't want to see her get hurt but I can do it in a nice way without you know a kind way not nice nice is not always you know a good way to be kind I can do it in a kind way where I'm not hurting her feelings and but I'm helping open up like you said like an area that maybe she's been keeping suppressed or her brain is like yeah we're just never gonna go in that corner ever again (laughs) uh you know and she had the same upbringing I did I seem to attract a lot of people who have left their religion or who have grown up in a really religiously oppressive household um and she very much had that same upbringing and so we understand on like a different level that maybe the reaction she's having has nothing to do with the current situation but has everything to do with that trauma of being raised in such an oppressive household and that's what's really coming up and I think that really helps so finding people that have maybe been there done that with something similar also is a good plan to have as well. Absolutely absolutely and if you don't have people like that around like um well, you're in a Facebook group right now, but get in a Facebook group, like search that in the search bar, find a group. And there, there's so much support. And I know mm-hmm. like I was a little bit um, weird about it at first. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm on a Facebook group, mm. but I mean, I found <laughs> yes. like, I've, I've found so much support from people. Mm-hmm. I found you in a Facebook group, for example. Yeah, <laughs> like, we actually did. <laughs> and then I surprise, mean, surprise, so we both had a similar there. background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if you are looking for it, it will find you. So don't yes. be afraid to like look in a search bar. And I mean, if it, look at a couple different support groups, I know Air has one, I have one. Um, we There's tons of them. There's support out there. If, if you're really genuinely looking for it, you will mm-hmm. find it. And you will find some really beautiful humans out there to support you along the way. People that yeah. have been where you're at, people that are going through what you're going through you know, 
you're not alone. Yeah. That's the big thing. You're not alone and you're very valuable and you deserve to live in your power. And I don't mean like, whoa, like power, power, but your creative power, your feminine power, your energy, all that. You deserve to have that mm -hmm. for you and for mm -hmm. you to decide how you want to share that with the world, not for everyone else yeah. to tell you how you're gonna. Yes. Yes, everybody deserves a happy, healthy life, however that looks for them. And that's the other piece, too, that I find that you said that you're never alone. Is your brain like lies to you when you're in that like stressed out, overwhelmed nervous system, flight and fight, you know, kind of like just kind of stuck there? Is that you are the only one going through this? You're terribly alone. You're never going to get out of it because nobody else understands. And that is so not true. And learning to, you know, override that part of your brain and go and start looking for that help and support is also, you know, imperative in your journey is trying to find those people who do understand and know and are coming, you know, to the same conclusions and will help you. Yeah. <laughs> My friend's dog decided to come and attack me. Oh. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> so cute. Can you guys see her? You see her? She's a little oh. basset hound. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Charlotte. Oh, You're interrupting. I know you don't care. Yeah. So <laughs> that was really everything that I wanted to go over. But um, there's a few people watching. So let's open the floor and see if anybody has any questions. And if not, then we will get going. But I do appreciate you coming and talking about your book. Um, again, her book is awesome, y'all. I really highly recommend you find it and look it up. Um, can you tell us where we can find that, Ashley? Um, absolutely. Currently, it's available on Amazon. Um, I'll put the link in, in the description when we wrap up. Um, I think it's $2.99, or if you have Kindle Unlimited, um, you can read it um, with that membership. I'm planning to get it to where you can order it in print soon. I just haven't got it set up yet. So um, it's an ebook format currently that you can download straight to Kindle and start reading it. Um, Yes, but I, I wanted to say thank you for having me because I love interacting with you. I love that so much. Yes, every time we get together, we just have like such an energy and it's been hard to get together lately between everything that's going on in both of our lives. So I really appreciate yeah. you carving out the time for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Anytime, honestly. Yes. And on top of reading, just reading her book also has like journal prompts and like things that you can actually like action steps to start putting in to place so you can really start using those sizzling secrets to your advantage and starting acting them in your life. So it is a like total amazing book for everything you need. So if anybody has questions, you can pop them in the comments in Facebook and we'll get to those. If nobody has any live questions now, then just please add them later if you're watching the replay and Ashley's in the group, we can pop in and answer any questions you have. That's it for another great episode of The Herbal Iyer. Tune in next week for more valuable content with your host, Iyer Atla.